What's up, y'all? My name is JR, and for those of you who don't already know, I'm a huge movie and TV nerd. If you're new here, I appreciate you taking the time to check out my channel. I hope you'll consider sticking around and joining the film community I'm trying to build here on YouTube. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving my reaction and review of David Ayer's newest feature film, The Beekeeper. And just so we're clear, this video will contain spoilers, so if you haven't seen this movie yet and you don't want to know anything that happens in it, you might want to exit this video now. And with that being said, no more wasting time. Let's get into it. The Beekeeper is a 2024 American action thriller film directed by David Ayer and written by Kurt Wimmer about a former operative of a clandestine organization who, after finding out his friend and neighbor has died by suicide after falling for a phishing scam, sets out to exact revenge against the company responsible. The film stars Jason Statham, Emmy Raver Lampman, Josh Hutcherson, Bobby Naderi, Minnie Driver, Felicia Rashad, and Jeremy Irons. The Beekeeper was released in the United States by Amazon MGM Studios on January 12th of 2024. And at the time of the making of this video, the movie has a 68% rating on Rotten Tomatoes based on 111 critic reviews with a markedly high audience score of 93% based on over 500 verified ratings. Now, it does have a mediocre meta score of 54 on Metacritic, but that's based on only 33 critic reviews with a user score of 6.2 based on only 13 user ratings. And finally, it has a 6.8 out of 10 on IMDb, and that's based on almost 4,500 reviews. So look, I'm all for a good metaphor in a film. But I have to start by saying that I honestly think the writers decided to lean a bit too heavily into the whole beekeeper thing. I mean, Jason Statham's character could have simply been an expat who retired from service and decided to keep bees as a hobby. I think that would have absolutely still made the film's name apropos. But he's actually an ex-member of a covert group called beekeepers in this film who retired and then actually decided to become a beekeeper, like for real. And all throughout the film, they kept referring to how bees behave in groups in order to, you know, predict his movements and, you know, what he might do next. And, and I don't know, I just thought it was all a bit much. Now, as for the casting of this film, I have to say I was mildly disappointed. Uh, Statham though certainly a bona fide action star, is almost 60, and it's starting to show. Now, don't get me wrong. He looked like he could probably still whoop my butt, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. So I, I just wonder if they could have gotten someone a little bit younger for this role, considering what the role entailed from a physical standpoint, in order to help the believability of the rather incredulous storyline. Uh, Josh Hutchinson plays Derek Danforth, son of President Danforth, and I don't know, it just didn't feel right to me. I just didn't think that the role fit him quite right. Um, Emmy Raver Lampman played FBI agent Veronica Parker, and I didn't really like her look for the role either, though I will admit she played the role fairly well. Um, I did not have any problem with her acting performance. And finally, Felicia Rashad plays Eloise Parker, Veronica's mother, who lives on a spacious estate I assume, in semi-rural Massachusetts. Um, but she's only in the film for a few minutes, and I just kind of felt like they played Felicia Rashad's face a little bit with this role. Because, um, I mean, she was in and out like 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 that. So if you're expecting her to be in a large part of this film, don't. Don't. And, you know, speaking of, you know, minutes, I got to say this film got straight to the point. Uh, even noticeably so. I mean, for a film of this length, we should have had about 10 minutes or so to get to the catalyst of this whole thing. Um, but I would say that it didn't even take five minutes before we were smack dab in the middle of the debate, which also didn't seem to take very long at all before we were off to the races. Um, the plot points in this story were as ridiculous as you might come to expect for a film like this, um, made even more ridiculous when you see how those plot points actually play themselves out. The damage that Adam Clay does for most of the film is inflicted with his bare hands, even though his opposition is 
heavily armed in most cases. Um, with the real crux of the actual story centering around whether or not Veronica, the FBI agent, is willing to seek revenge against the people who she blames for her mother's death by simply allowing Mr. Beekeeper to ultimately finish what he started at the beginning of the film. By the time we get to the third act, you know, Adam Clay, the beekeeper, has managed to work his way to the top of the proverbial food chain and finally decides to use guns to deal with his growing opposition. And he does so in equally implausible fashion, um, mowing down FBI SWAT agents and other hired guns in crowded rooms on a palatial estate, never managing to injure any of the many, many, many innocent bystanders, all while the agents and hired guns return fire in equally wild fashion, never managing to hit anything but air. And then after he has satisfactorily dealt with the issue at hand, um, he implores Veronica to let him go. And of course she does right before the movie very abruptly cuts to black. And, and I do mean abruptly. So, you know, overall, I give this film uh, a 55 percent or a 5.5 if you're thinking IMDb score. I think Jason Statham is finally beginning to age out of these kind of roles. And I also think that how you do a movie like this is really, really, really important. And I think that can get lost sometimes with people just kind of wanting there to be punching and kicking and fighting and shooting and things blowing up all over the place. Um, this movie tries to be John Wick, but it's not. Um, it plays more like a fighter past his prime, exploiting the incompetence of those who oppose him more so than him simply getting the better of equally competent combatants. And when you add in what I think were less than stellar casting choices, along with the herky jerky pacing of this particular film, the only thing I could find to really be happy about when I left the theater was the fact that this film was rather short. But what do you guys think? Have you seen The Beekeeper yet? If you have, did you enjoy the movie? Let me know in the comments. And for those of you who might be new to the channel, be sure to like and share this video. If you really like the content, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way, you'll be notified whenever I drop a new video. Also, be sure to go check out themadscreenwriter.com for more television and film reviews and info on my upcoming film projects. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I got screenplays to write. I'll catch y'all in the next video.